What's going on guys, this is Lemme here, and this is my Mac Mini setup. So I know a lot of you are thinking, why the hell are you using a Mac Mini when your gaming channel is predominantly gaming? So I actually ran into a couple of snags when it came to my gaming desktop PC build, and you've probably even seen in some videos that featured my face that I've had the PC build in the background, but things haven't really been going too well with the build, so I decided to scrap it and ultimately move over to Mac OS. Now there are some bumps in the road that also have some discrepancies with Mac OS, over Windows, but I did overcome them with some certain aspects and I hopefully will cover them in this video. The main selling point with me getting a Mac Mini over a giant desktop computer was the fact that I had a powerful desktop computer in a 7 inch form factor. With the Mac Mini that's possible and it's also a lot smaller than typical ATX case PCs that you could build by yourself. Obviously Mac OS is a big difference over Windows when it comes to gaming and editing, but when it came to primarily editing, which is the things that I've been doing more than I have been gaming on my computer, then it became just a better option for me. And gaming is also possible through the dedicated use of an eGPU, which does make a lot more bulkier space, especially if you're comparing it to an ATX computer. But I've actually managed to get the GPU discreted underneath my desk so you can't even see it when I'm gaming or doing anything graphically intensive. It just looks like it's using a Mac Mini. That's one of the main selling points that I like about this is that my setup looks very clean, it looks very minimal, and there's no cables or anything just dangling around everywhere, no giant computer in the middle of my screen. It's just a tiny little seven inch MacBook with a monitor right next to it and the keyboard and mouse is completely wireless. So what made me go away from PC gaming compared to using a fully fledged decked out computer was with when it came to PC gaming, I didn't really do it competitively. Yes, there was a string where I did play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but that's not a graphically intensive game. When it came to other games that actually, AAA titles that actually required a lot of horsepower, I didn't generally play them that much. The most of those AAA games I've actually played on console with my friends. So moving over from a lower end computer actually was a personal better step for me. But when it came to AAA title games, I play on console as well, so that didn't really hinder my experience. When it does come to playing AAA title games on my Mac computer, it's actually set up in a way where it's almost perfect. Now what I do have on my computer is Apple Bootcamp, which is set up with a 50 gigabyte partition of Windows 10, and I can easily switch between those two, and it easily works between my eGPU, so it works for both Windows and Mac, so I could get that power no matter what. And what I wound up doing is using a 500 gig external hard drive to put all of my games inside of, so I can play any, as much games as I want on one dedicated hard drive, and I don't have to worry about losing space. For extra space on my Mac Mini build, I actually wound up getting a 1TB solid state drive from Samsung, and that one uses the bulk of my memory when it comes to having archived video footage and additional games that I might not want to be put on a hard drive for slower speeds. The way I have my Mac Mini configured was the second tier option that started at $1000, and I upgraded it with the i7 processor, which is the 8700U processor. It's not the 8700K, but it still gets the job done and still and of having a 6 core processor in a tiny form factor, which is the main goal that I was going for. When it comes to graphics, it uses the integrated 620 Intel graphics, which aren't really that good, but it still gets the job done if you're just using it as a base machine. And I've even upgraded the RAM to 16 gigabytes, keeping the storage at around 128 gigs, which isn't really a lot, but like I said, that one terabyte solid state drive really does come in handy. Other things that I do prefer over Mac OS is from having my handoff on my iPhone switching directly over to my MacBook. So any pictures or videos or footage that I take maybe on my phone, I could easily airdrop it over to my Mac seamlessly rather than me plugging it directly into a computer or doing it through iTunes and it's a whole mess. With iPhones and Mac OS's, since I have predominantly everything Apple anyway, it was just a seamless decision just to have everything unified into one ecosystem that everybody likes to call it from. 
but it does work out awesomely in my use case. And when it comes to video editing, Adobe Premiere works flawlessly on Mac OS. I also use Adobe Photoshop, which also works seamlessly. I do have Final Cut Pro, but I'm not really that good into using it, but hopefully it would replace me using Adobe Premiere sooner or later that I will be using it for my future video content. And Mac OS in general, just for me and my use case, is actually just a lot better because I'm more of a casual user, like I said, compared to gaming. And when I do want to have like that little gust of playing some AAA titles, I could easily switch over to Windows via Boot Camp and I'm ready to play any game I want whenever I download it and it works flawlessly. The eGPU that I have is using the Razer Core X and the GPU that I put inside of it is the Vega 64, the equivalent to the Blackmagic eGPU Pro that was around $1,500. I was considering buying it, but then I wound up saving a lot of money just having that eGPU enclosure as well as the graphics card separately. I got the graphics card for around $400 and then the eGPU I paid only $300 for. So the price for the eGPU Pro from Blackmagic was around $1,500, which was way too expensive. And the price I paid for the same graphics card on a little bit of a bigger enclosure, yes, I lose some ports on it, but I still do have the upgraded processing power uh, it came out to around $700 as opposed to $1,500. So it really did save me a lot of money when it comes to my wallet. Um, I also used a USB 3.0 Thunderbolt 40 gigabyte per second six foot cable to get that cable to grow underneath my desk. The thing that's awesome about it, yes, it's an expensive cable, but you do get those fast enough speeds where you can route it basically anywhere. So the eGPU is actually super far apart from my Mac computer. And in terms of performance loss or gain, it's not really as much as I thought. Um, I thought I would be actually losing a lot more frames than I am losing right now. And I'm actually perfectly capable of playing high-end titles with over 144 frames per second, which is perfectly fine for my G-Sync monitor. And it works almost seamlessly. There were some discretions when it came to my eGPU. The main problem was, was that I had some driver issues when it were to work on Windows, and I actually figured it out when it came to switching the boards. Um, the, using, using the HDMI on the Mac Mini routed directly to the monitor actually gave some performance dips. What we wound up having to do was I actually had to take the USB-C from my Mac Mini, take it to the eGPU, and then get a display port from the eGPU over to the monitor. So it makes this weird chain effect, but the way I have it set up underneath the desk, it doesn't really bother me in terms of cable management. And it does look pretty clean, especially when you take a look at the, the way that it's set up. When it comes to gaming peripherals, I went away with the gaming keyboard and the gaming mouse and I actually went ahead and just stuck with the Apple Magic Keyboard just because of the low profile and I actually really like the way the keys are on that keyboard as some people would unpopularly would uh, not recommend. But I do like that keyboard especially for when you're typing documents or when you're typing scripts. Um, and video editing, it's just so much more seamless. For gaming, I don't really recommend it, but it's still good enough for me because I've been used to gaming on Chicola keyboard since I had gaming laptops back in the day. When it comes to my mouse, I'm using an MX Master 2S in blue, matched to the aesthetic of my blue setup that I have going around my room right now. And the camera I'm actually using is the camera I'm using right now to film. Some of my streams I've been using this. This is the Alpha 6500 with a 16 millimeter Sigma lens. I do have a webcam that I probably am gonna start using more than I'm using for the Alpha 6500 because I didn't really like the way the setup was with the 6500 being in front of my face at all times. And I don't like having it be powered on the whole time while I'm streaming or recording. So just for the sake of my camera's life, I really would just prefer to keep it for videos like this instead of just streaming. Yes, you know, you won't see my face as clear, but I feel like that wouldn't be a difference because you're here to watch the gameplay when I do my streaming and stuff like that, not my face. Um, the webcam I'm using is the C920, which is years old, but it's probably one of the best webcams you could use right now. And it looks perfectly fine, especially if it's gathered in a tiny window that's on the side of my gameplay. When it comes to pure footage, I'm using this Alpha 6500. I do have a Sony A7R Mark II. Um, that's predominantly for photos because you get the higher resolutions. When it comes to lenses, I do have a variable scope of lenses. I do have the 16 millimeter lens, which I'm using right now by Sigma. I also have the 30 millimeter 1.4 lens, um, which is better for getting close closer up portrait photos, but it still has that 1.4 aperture. I do like the 
wideness that this 16 millimeter gives me because I could actually sit back and you could see me fully in the frame. But when it comes to just a variable lens, I do have the Sony 18 to 105 constant F4, which is awesome because this is the max length that you're going to be getting with the lens, especially if you were to take out that 105 millimeter, it's not going to telescope like all lenses. This actually zooms internally. And this is one of the, the cheapest G master lenses they actually do have. And it's pretty small. It's a pretty beefy setup, especially with my mirrorless camera I'm using now. You don't have to risk that uh, lack of exposure when it comes to your f-stop aperture because it's a constant f4 no matter what when you're 18 or when you're up to 105 or in between rather than losing your light when you go all the way up to 105. So this is a really nice versatile lens if you like to do traveling and like to do various amounts of zoom levels. But overall, when it comes to videos like this, I wouldn't really recommend this lens, but it's a great overall lens for everything else. Um, predominantly, I would prefer it more for photos than I would do for videos because having that F4 is not gonna bring up a lot of light. Like I'm using right now, I'm using an F1.4 aperture, which is definitely, a higher end aperture than it is with that lens over there. Now what I use for recording videos, predominantly for streaming, and also just recording videos for the sake of YouTube, I use OBS Studio. Um, I have it for both Mac and Windows, depending on which operating system I'm using. Predominantly I use it more on the Mac OS side than I do for Windows, which does lack a lot more features than the Windows version. For instance, I have to actually, like I can't record desktop audio, which was another workaround I had to do just to get desktop audio to be heard. Another workaround was trying to get party chat to work for my Xbox so you could hear what my teammates are saying through Xbox Live. What I actually circumvened that with was I use party chat and it directly records from my capture card and I'm actually using a 3.5 millimeter microphone that attaches to the bottom of my controller and that microphone picks me up where they could hear me and then I play the audio down to the speakers which also captures on the capture card. It works well for my situation, it works well for recording. I just wish I had more control over the voice to the game volume, but I really can't. But it does sound good in post and it's, you know, good enough for my needs. When it comes to mixing audio, I actually do use the Astro Mix Amp. That is the newest one from the TR Pro series, I believe they have. Um, that one works perfectly fine. I have the digital output audio from my TV and then I have the USB powered to my computer where I get the audio from my computer and I also get the audio from my TV at the same exact time. And then when it comes to streaming and using audio, I basically just use a SteelSeries Arctis 3 gaming headset and that takes the bulk of my microphone and my headset audio. I do have it customized with custom ear pads which I will also link in the description. And those ear pads basically give me better noise isolation so I could hear less around me, but I could also hone in on other stuff that's actually coming out of my headphones. And it just sounds better because the since it's more isolated, the bass is just a little bit more prominent. So it, it pushes out the audio, which, which is expected out of those Arctis headphones. It actually sounds a lot better than the stock ear pads that come with the headphones. It actually made, it, it made a big difference when it comes to audio quality. Other adjustments is that people also wonder how I have a lot of the big collection on my games when I'm streaming. It's because for years, since I actually even had the Xbox One Day One Edition, I actually have a Seagate three terabyte hard drive that has to get plugged into the wall for power and also into the Xbox for the actual speed transfer to work. But it's an older three terabyte drive and it works flawlessly. I've had it for years and it never failed me ever since. Um, if it does fail me, I will upgrade to just a regular portable drive that doesn't require a hardwired plugged in to work, but it is using a desktop grade hard drive rather than a small form factor laptop 2.5 inch drive. So it does work perfectly fine. And like I've said, I've had it for years and it holds thousands upon thousands of gigs just on my games alone. When it comes to gameplay, I'm using an Xbox One X on a new LG 4K TV. This is actually a 49 inch TV. This is one of the thin Q models, so it's actually one of the one of the mid-range models. It's not one of the higher up OLED TVs, but it works perfectly fine, especially for my sitting distance when I'm playing on a game. It works perfectly fine when it comes to backlighting, especially when I'm trying to play games in the dark where it has local dimming on the TV. So when there's like a bright area somewhere in the corner, that corner only lights up rather than the whole display lighting up and then everything that's black, that's supposed to be black, is like a crushed out dark gray. So this TV works 
awesomely when it comes to gaming in the dark and just general just watching content it's just so much better having that over my old 42 inch tv that i had a couple of months ago also a lot of people were commenting on my zim and how i have that set up i still have the g502 mouse and i'm using a coolertron mechanical keyboard uh, gamepad which can be programmable to any key whatsoever and you could switch it out to whatever keys you want. Um, I've also had that for about a year now and it's never failed me yet. I might switch over to a keyboard that has like a little bit of a quieter switch, but I'm also gonna probably try to experiment with something like O-rings to also dampen that sound because for now it works perfectly fine and I'm perfectly happy with the way that I have my Zim set up. So that's about it guys. I hope I covered about everything that I have in my setup, predominantly my Mac setup. Um, gaming on it isn't really that hard, it's just getting that Windows partition to work and the eGPU to get it uh, just conveniently working. Um, I did run into snags when it came to my eGPU because the eGPU actually throttles a lot of the USB ports that are on that same exact line of ports because I guess it just draws from the same power. Um, so for the Mac Mini, when it comes to OBS, if I'm using my eGPU and I'm streaming through OBS on Windows, it does bottleneck my computer where it actually only exports around like 40 frames when I'm supposed to be exporting around 60 frames. So the stream looks very laggy when I do it through Windows. So that's why, like I said, I stream predominantly through Mac OS. And so far it hasn't been giving me any issues whatsoever. I just think Mac OS just had it better optimized when it comes to the power delivery on the eGPUs more than Windows computers. But for now, I'm super satisfied with the way I have my setup. It's very clean looking, it's very minimal looking. Um, there's no wires in the way, everything just works. I just turn it on and it's ready to go. I don't have to worry about charging my devices. My Mac keyboard and my mouse have awesome charging. I haven't charged it since I got it and it's at least two months old right now. And when it does come to charging, I just have the ports readily available that I could just plug it directly in and sleep overnight and then by the time I wake up it's ready to go again. I hope you guys enjoyed my tiny setup video and how I basically get things to work. Um, I haven't really found a lot of idea. I haven't really found a lot of ideas to make in the future but hopefully this can draw a little bit more inspiration for myself and especially to see how it works out when I am editing a little bit because I still got to shoot some b-roll. But um, yeah that's a little bit of a behind the scenes. I'm actually approaching 2,900 subscribers, which is very close to 3,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. You guys, keep doing what you're doing. Make sure you comment uh, if you have any questions, and I will make sure to reply to them as soon as I can. Please like this video if you do like it. Dislike it if you don't like it. And like I said, if you don't like it, please make a comment. Just let me know what I need to do to improve on it. Um, I really. I'm sorry about my voice sounding like this. I'm actually under the weather, but I, I really wanted to push this video out before um, I actually had some more time because I actually also now work full time. So working full time on top of a YouTube channel is kind of hard to do, but I'm trying to get the best out of it. And I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you later. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.